welcome back in this section we are going to learn about aws eks irsa which is nothing but aws iam roles for kubernetes service accounts so this is a very very important concept from aws eks perspective so many csi controllers and load balancer controllers so everything depends on this respective concept so it's very important to understand this concept in detail so we have a very detailed section with a practical demo before entering into ebs csi controller or efs csi controller or load balancer controller so we are going to do this one with a practical demo and when we are implementing those controllers it becomes super easy for us so now let's understand something here so how to access aws services from workloads running in eks cluster so you have a simple pod or simple job running in your eks cluster and those job or that respective pod need to access the aws services from your kubernetes cluster so how we are going to do that so let's see that so you have a eks cluster and you have created a simple job here and this job will have something called a aws cli container so wherein you will pass an argument to that cli container s3 space ls so what does that cli aws cli container should do so it should list the s3 buckets available in your aws account so if you see here so this is the thing it need to do and kts job whatever you have created is not going to do that and that job is going to fail until and unless we need to define the irsi concept and then implement that irsa concept here so which means by default whenever you run a pod or a job anything in your eks cluster they cannot access your aws services in the aws cloud out of the box so we need to do some important steps here and let's see what exactly are those so why do kubernetes worker loads need to access these aws services so why these pods why these kubernetes pods need to access aws services so from eks cluster point of view there are some things and from our application point of view also it is required so let's see from eks point of view why eks workloads need to access the other aws services so if you see here there is something called ebs csi controller so what does this controller do is it will be able to create resize delete or retain the aws ebs volumes from kubernetes resources in eks cluster so using kubernetes storage classes persistent volume claims and then persistent volumes so for this purpose it need the access to aws services so for this purpose we need to define the irsa in our eks cluster in combination with aws iam in the same line we'll also have something called efs csi controller and which can map efs file system to our kubernetes pods in our eks cluster or it will we'll also have something called aws load balancer controller plus kubernetes ingress resources so we can create aws application and network load balancers with all the settings from our eks cluster itself using the kts ingress resources so for that purpose also the kubernetes eks cluster workloads running inside it need to have access to aws services so only the ebs csi controller pod whenever you deploy your kubernetes ingress resource so that respective load balancer controller pod can create the load balancer related resource of type application or network load balancer and external dns controller so this also will be a pod in your aws uh, eks cluster and it can create update or delete the aws route 53 dns records so for that purpose also we need to have the access to aws service which is called route 53 service so for all these things we need the irsa to concept to be understood in detail and we need to implement it in same line these are all aws services you can see ebs efs load balancer and route 53 so these are by default load balancer services which we need to implement and your application might have some use case wherein you want to access your aws services example like the demo which we are going to implement now so using the aws cli container we are going to list the s3 buckets uh, 
from Kubernetes itself by accessing the S3 bucket list, right? So which means inside of EKS, uh, EKS cluster, a pod is running and it will be able to list the AWS sur uh, S3 buckets list, which is nothing but outside, outside of EKS cluster, a AWS related service called S3. So let's see what exactly it means, right? So the key items for IRSA implementation is AWS IAM identity provider and AWS STS, which is nothing but security token service, which is with Azure role with web identity API operation, which we are going to use. So even the AWS STS service will have multiple API operations inside that the one which is related to assume role with web identity api operation which we are going to use and which will eventually generate the aws iam temporary role credentials for us and from eks cluster perspective so we are going to know about eks cluster open id connect provider and kubernetes service accounts and kubernetes projected service account feature which is nothing but oidc json web token so these are the key items from irsa implementation so let's see eks cluster open id connect provider url so whenever you create a eks cluster so if you go to the configuration tab and if you go to the details tab so you will find something called here a open id connect provider url so what exactly that means right so by default your EKS cluster can act as a open ID connect provider. So by default, it is enabled that way. So if it is enabled that way, what is the use from AWS IAM standpoint? So identity federation is allowed on AWS IAM. So which means any external identity provider can be integrated with AWS IAM to access the AWS services like you can take Google IDP or Microsoft IDP or any ping IDP or any other IDP you can connect to AWS and then using the credentials present in your respective Google or Microsoft or ping so using those things you can access the AWS services so instead of Google or ping or Microsoft here we are using EKS cluster as our IDP. So which means this EKS cluster will be added as the identity as the IDP in the identity provider section of our AWS IAM and this EKS cluster open ID connect configuration endpoint. So any open ID connect provider will have their own well known open ID configuration endpoint. So for our EKS cluster, whatever we have created, so it's EKS cluster open ID connect provide URL. So this one appended with dot well known slash open ID configuration will provide the open ID connect configuration information of our open ID provider, which is our EKS cluster. So these are all the information which we need to know before implementing it. So that's the reason all these screenshots were put here. And if you go to the identity and access management, AWS IAM, so you will have the screen called identity providers here option. So here inside this, you are going to configure this respective URL, which is open ID connect provider URL. So what happens at that point? So it will consume means like for this respective AWS IAM. So the identities from EKS cluster can be accepted to access the AWS services. So that's the key point. Once we open this identity provider, whatever we have configured, so we can see the provider information here and also the audience it is configured, which is nothing but sts.amazonaws.com, which is nothing but AWS security token service. So now let's come back here and understand how we are going to create the resources for IRSA implementation, right? So in EKS cluster, we are going to create a resource called Kubernetes service account. And we are also going to create a IAM policy, right? So which will have access to read the S3 buckets. So nothing but the policy is S3 read only access. And we'll create a IAM role 
with action as is assume role web identity sts assume role web identity so we'll create a im role with sts assume role web identity and also associate the iam policy to this iam role and this iam role arn we are going to annotate it in this respective service account annotate means we are going to add in the annotations uh, field inside this service account in the metadata this respect to iam role arn and then we are also going to define a kubernetes job and inside that job it is going to run with the service account whatever we have defined now here which is irsa demo service account it is going to use and run this job so whenever we deploy this respective job it is going to create a pod and inside that pod we will have a container called aws cli container with arguments as s3 space ls and it sheet and the logs when you check that respective job logs so you should be able to see that the list of buckets are provided for your respective command so if all these things are successful then you will get the value which means this respective service account whatever we have created here we have annotated it with the iam role right with the iam policy s3 read only access with action as sts important api named assume role with web identity so which will generate the temporary credentials to access this s3 service from kubernetes job when this service account is used in this kubernetes job so let's uh, see this functional flow on a high level so you have a eks cluster and this eks cluster acting as the external idp to your aws iam service and you have created a kubernetes service account inside that and annotated with the iam role and then iam role which has the iam policy with information or access about s3 read only access and now you will also have that read only access inside this iam policy in addition to that so whenever you deploy your kubernetes job in kubernetes cluster so it is going to create a pod and it is also going to send a token which is nothing but this kubernetes service account will have a secret and inside that secret you will have a jwt token which is named as projected service account jwt token which will be passed to your aws iam service and in your aws iam service you have a feature called federated identities using oidc right so which is nothing but you have added this as a identity provider here so which means any token provided by this respective eks cluster right so it will validate and accept that jwt token from eks cluster perspective and once it accepts that respective token so it will send that jwt to your aws sts service so this respective iam service will send it to the aws sts api named assume role with web identity api operation so that respective jwt is submitted to this api operation and immediately when it submits it will also consider the iam role and iam policy whatever we have created here and it will generate immediately this sts this api will generate a iam temporary credentials and these temporary credentials will be used to access the aws s3 service to list the buckets so in very simple terms the key things here are create a service account create a iam policy create a iam role and associate this iam role to this service account and rest all whatever happens in the background so i have shown you here and also add this eks cluster as a identity provider in iam so the task one is add this eks cluster as a identity provider in iam and task two is create a service account and task three is create a iam role with a iam policy to read the s3 bucket access and then associate this iam role arn annotated on the service account that's all and rest all we have provided the access and if we use this service account in any of the job to list these s3 buckets so from kubernetes you are accessing the aws s3 bucket listing and it is going to work and in background all these things are going to happen which means 
this kubernetes pod is going to submit this projected service account jwt token to aws iam and aws iam will validate and accept that jwt token and then that jwt will be sent to the sts assume role with web identity api operation and there it will generate the temporary credentials to access the aws s3 service so in the background all these things are going to happen so now the next thing here is so this is something like kubectl describe the secret with name irsa demo sca token so this secret is mounted inside your service account named irsa demo sca sca means your service account and you can see the token so we are telling from beginning this is a jwt json web token so this is the token when you take that and then go to the website jwt.io and then provide that entire token encoded format here it is going to decode and provide the information for you decoded jwt token says that its issuer is kubernetes service account and you will also have the namespace from which this respective service account is created and also the secret name and all the information will be present inside this payload data so we just described in kubernetes about our jwt token and then we took that and then also decoded and then viewed it and now what are we going to learn primarily or what are we primarily going to change so the first things first is in our eks cluster project so which is nothing but in our project 01 so we are going to add two more files which is c601 and c602 where we are going to add the iam oidc connect provider so we are going to add our eks cluster as the identity provider in our iam service so th those changes belongs to the eks cluster so that's the reason those were added in project one of our eks cluster so c601 and then c602 and next comes the project two which is eks irsa demo so what is our demo here so we will run a simple kubernetes job in our eks cluster which should eventually create a pod and it should have the container called aws cli and it should have the argument called s3 ls and whenever you verify the logs of that respective kubernetes job you should have the list of your aws s3 buckets so that's what is the use case here and for that purpose we need to create a service account and all those things so to start with the c1 versions.tf we are going to update it with irsa demo related new dynamo db table and also the s3 bucket key which is nothing but terraform.tf state file in a different folder or different name for the tf state file and in c2 remote state data source so this is coming from previous sections only which means how to access the project 01 eks cluster related information in project 02 so it is going to be as is no changes from our previous demos and c301 and 02 are generic and local values so same as our project 1 only but we are trying to maintain the same naming convention hr hyphen dev hyphen something like that so for that purpose we will use this c301 and then 02 and c401 will we will define the aws provider and also we will define the kubernetes provider here and in c402 we will define the irsa iam policy and then role so the policy you are going to define is nothing but the existing s3 read only access policy only you will associate it with this existing iam role but this iam role we are going to define in such a way that action is going to be assume role with web identity and additional information in that and this is going to be a little tricky one and we have implemented successfully using terraform and we are going to review that in detail when we go to that respective step and we will also define the kubernetes service account and you are also going to annotate that service account with the iam role you have created in c402 and finally you, in c404 you are going to create the kubernetes job with kubernetes service account and aws cli container so all these things we are going to do in our upcoming lecture so i'll see you in the next lecture until then bye bye thank you